Hi everyone. Today I'd like to talk to you about telescoping gauges. Now telescoping gauges are used to measure the internal dimensions of a bore, either on the lathe or on the mill, it doesn't matter. If it's round, uh, we can use telescoping gauges to measure them. And they're really desirable because they're very cost effective compared to the cost of uh, inside micrometers, for instance, or dial bore gauges. Both of those are quite expensive. Uh, and telescoping gauges can be a good bit cheaper, especially on the used market. Uh, to give you a little reference, the full set, this is a Starrett set. Uh, a brand new set of Starrett telescoping gauges is about $300. Uh, but I got this one used on eBay for about $50 and it showed very little use. Uh, I will say avoid the imported ones at all cost. I've used a bunch of different sets and the imported ones are just horrible. The, the fit is very loose and they never seem to really stay put. So the way these work is you have these spring-loaded pistons right here and each one slides in and out on this variety. There's another one that I'll show you in a second that only one of them moves. But either way, you've got the spring-loaded pistons, you've got this screw here on the end that you tighten up, and the pistons stay in, in place. Uh, so in practice, what you would do, I've got this little cutaway section of pipe here, is you would insert it into a bore at a bit of an angle like this. And then you release your screw, they snap out, and then what you do is you you sweep the telescoping gauge out of the bore. And what that does is as it gets to the straight section here, it uh, the bore squeezes the piston in as much as it's going to go and then it'll just pop right out. And at that point you take your regular set of micrometers and you measure across these pistons. There's a bit of a trick to this, and it does take a little practice. Um, what I usually like to do is hold my micrometer between my thumb and these three fingers here. And this allows me the freedom to move the thimble on the micrometer. Meanwhile, I've also got the telescoping gauge in between these fingers, and that allows me to rock it back and forth. So what I'm trying to do is close the micrometer very, very slowly while also moving the head of the telescoping gauge back and forth. And what you're trying to do is find the exact same feel that you had on the bore of whatever it is you're measuring. So you'll feel a point where it starts to drag. Right there. So that feels just like it did in the bore of the of the pipe that I just measured. And in this case, you just go ahead and measure it just like uh, you would with a regular micrometer. So this is a 2 to 3 inch mic, and this would be 2.109 and uh, 3 tenths. Uh, so that would be the measurement of the bore at that spot. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the pitfalls that come with measuring with telescoping gauges. And one of them is the ability to move these pistons in with the micrometer head. We had measured 2.109 and some change there uh, earlier. Well, I can just keep on moving this in and, you know, if I want, I can easily wish the measurement into existence and make it read two inches. Um, it doesn't mean that my bore is actually two inches. It just means that my micrometer is two inches. So when I'm actually trying to take a measurement on these, I actually like to stare at the head of the telescoping gauge as I rock it back and forth, and I totally ignore the measurement on the micrometer. The reason is, you can look at that measurement and wish whatever measurement you want into existence. For that reason, I also don't use the ratchet or friction thimble on my mic when I'm using these. It seems like that puts just enough tension to push the pistons in on the telescoping gauge. And when you do that, you end up with a smaller measurement than what you really actually have. Now that can screw you up if you're going for something with a tight tolerance, like you're trying to make a press fit. Um, you think that you're good, and then you try to mate the two parts together and they just slip into each other instead of uh, pressing like they should. The other thing with these is it takes a little bit of practice to get a good measurement. 
if you don't have the sense of feel required to find the same feel that you had in the bore of the, the piece that you're measuring, uh, then you could very easily push the pistons in. And usually when someone is a beginner with telescoping gauges, they pretty much always measure things too small. Uh, they push the pistons in and, uh, and then you, they don't get accurate measurements. Part of that is people not rocking the head of the telescoping gauge back and forth as they're trying to measure it. If you don't do that, uh, you really don't have the feedback necessary through the micrometer uh, to tell where you're actually hitting that, that gauge. So rocking the head back and forth allows you to slowly move in and you'll feel it when it first starts to grab. You also want to avoid trying to use calipers with these. Uh, for most of the same reasons. It's very easy to wish a measurement into existence and with a caliper it's actually even easier because you've got this thumb wheel magnifying your strength. Uh, so you can pretty easily put your telescoping gauge in there and try to measure it and just keep on going. So you can see how oh, I'm just pushing the pistons in. It's an exaggeration for the camera but um, it seems that everyone who tries to use calipers for that just ends up getting at least a couple of thousand smaller than they really are. So an excellent way to practice these, since it requires such a sense of feel, is to take something with a known diameter. And what better way to do that than with a roller bearing? So you can look up the specs on a roller bearing and you can be very sure that the bore of that roller bearing is going to be incredibly accurate to what it, uh, uh, what it says it is. Uh, usually well within a couple of tenths. So in this case, this is a 6203 bearing, which means it has a 17 millimeter bore. In inches, that's 0 0.6693. So I can take this telescoping gauge that measures from half to three quarters. I can put it into that bearing, tighten up my screw, I can sweep it out, and then take my micrometer here, and if I'm not getting 669 something, the fault is mine. It's not the bearings, it's not the telescoping gauge. It's the same deal, doesn't matter what size micrometer you're using. You still wiggle the head back and forth just like this and slowly move the thimble in. And right there, I'm getting 669 and uh, I'm getting about maybe 8 tenths there. Yep, eight tenths. So let me measure that again. This is a takeout bearing, so it's possible the inner race is worn just a little bit, but I'll measure in a different spot and see what happens. There's 669, and this time I got five tenths. So I'm getting closer to what it should be. So get yourself a bearing if you want to practice these. They're quite cheap, even brand new. Uh, something like a 203 might only cost you about 10 bucks. And it's just a really good way of practicing with telescoping gauges. So these sets measure from 5 sixteenths all the way up to 6 inches, uh, which covers the vast majority of things that you would probably be making in a machine shop bore-wise. Uh, I think you can get larger ones as well, uh, but the standard sets go from uh, A through F, uh, 6 pieces, all the way up to six inches. So I also have this craftsman set here and this is just to demonstrate what else you might see out there. Um, there's this other style that only has one moving piston on the telescoping gauge. Uh, aside from that, the two are equally good at measuring bores and equally accurate. Um, it's just another way of skinning that cat as far as making this thing. Um, I wouldn't Think of this as inferior in any way if you saw one of these out in the, uh, the world. And you can find these pretty often at flea markets and swap meets and things like that. So if you see one of these and it's not covered in a bunch of rust and it's not missing pieces, um, pick one up. You can usually get them maybe around $20 or $30 at, uh, at flea markets. As far as measuring bores go, it's pretty much one of the cheapest tools out there that you can buy. Um, especially on the used market. Um, anyway, I hope this helps, and if anyone has any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Until then, I'll see you next time.